Welcome back to Play on Wheels. Today, we've got the engine off the turbo lawnmower. We've got some of the junk that made that thing work, and we're gonna show you guys what we did and what we plan to do in the future. So stick around. If you haven't already checked out our other videos, check those out. Uh, it kind of gives an overview of what this project is and leads up to this point where we've got the engine pulled off, we've got some of the electronics, we're going to be doing a lot of upgrades. So you guys are going to want to see those videos, this video, and future videos uh, as this project continues. Anyway, I'll give you guys a closer look here of what we got on the workbench. So to start off, uh, we've got the electronics that were pretty much the brains of the operation. Um, this is the fuse block that provided power to the fuel pump, the Arduino, and the uh, fuel injector. So this I've got removed as well from that mower chassis um, because we're hopefully going to be able to use it in uh, the future build. Uh, like I mentioned before, the brains of the operation is right here on the table. The Arduino basically took the throttle position signal and outputted to this uh, MOSFET setup here, uh, which provided power to the injector and controlled the pulse rate and the um, length of the pulse for the injector. Essentially just acting like a really fancy carburetor that really was less fancy than a carburetor because uh, it didn't actually have any brains to it other than, hey, my throttle position is this, I should probably give about this much fuel so the fueling was way off. Uh, we didn't have control over timing or anything. So what we're hopefully going to do is make all that better. But give you guys a quick look here at the power plant on the workbench. Um, I've given a pretty detailed overview of this engine in previous videos. But just to go over it quickly, what we have here is a Briggs Vanguard 16 horsepower V-twin. It actually came from a Cub Cadet. Uh, garden tractor and I assume Cub Cadet didn't want you know their the Briggs branding on it maybe or uh, honestly I don't know but either way um, this is the engine setup so of course we got the turbo mounted up here nice and high up so everybody can see it uh, we've got the throttle body over there which uh, is not so nicely uh, plumbed in with this flexible radiator hose but Anyway, pretty simple setup. Like I mentioned, uh, there's not really a lot that it took to make this thing work. This is sort of the main harness here. So uh, the components you'll see on this is the boost pressure, uh, which went back to our gauge. Uh, we've got the two plugs here for uh, the injector and the throttle position sensor that's located on the throttle body right there. And like I mentioned, uh, don't, didn't have any control over timing, uh, no real gauge of fuel, like what needed to happen with the fuel. So looking to make this whole setup better and um, hopefully in the future, you know, this thing will actually make some power. Uh, before I forget, yeah, here's that fuel system. I don't think you guys saw it in the previous video either. Um, but basically what we've got here is just a copy of like a Walbro 255 fuel pump. We've got a return style Holly regulator, of course, with the gauge on it. And uh, the main fuel pressure line that went up to the injector there off the regulator. So, uh, of course, all the gauges, our gas pedal, everything. Basically, I stripped this thing down of all the components that made the EFI turbo engine work. And uh, that chassis went to a friend of mine. Uh, he's got some ideas for it, uh, maybe building a mud tractor out of it. And if we get a chance, we'll go over to his place sometime and check that out as well. All right, guys. So now that you've had a closer look at the engine and some of the components that it took to make this whole setup work, we're going to take a look at some of the things that we're going to do to this engine and to this uh, sort of brain box to make everything a hundred times better. So. We're talking full-on EFI with timing control. We're talking O2 sensor in the exhaust feedback for fuel trims, etc. cetera. Um, we're talking about a better intake setup, better just overall function of everything. So stick around for that. Um, I've got high hopes for this engine build and 
Uh, one of the big questions is, you know, what are you going to do with this engine? Because you got rid of the other chassis that it was on. So stick around for future videos and we've got some things in store. So I assure you, it'll be fun either way. All right guys, so the first thing I wanna show you all is what is gonna be the new brains of the EFI operation. So what we've got here is a Speedduino ECU. Um, this uses a Arduino, or in this case, the off-brand uh, Mega board as the brain. And then you have this daughter board here that's sold by, I believe it's called WMtronics. Um, but I'll put a link to this guy's website. They're not sponsored. Everything that you see here was paid for by me out of my own pocket, um, but really good to work with. You know, they ship you the bare PCB with all the components and you, you the user, are responsible for soldering everything together. So um, pretty cool little setup there, but as you can see, this one's already soldered. And this is the um, NO2C board is what it's called. And it's actually got inputs and outputs for, I believe, up to four injectors and four uh, coils. So uh, it's designed for two, but you can kind of tweak it and expand it up to four. But anyway, so this is going to be the key to making this whole build work like it's supposed to. Uh, there's a tuning software for this thing. Um, You've got full monitoring and control over all your parameters. And if you really want to, there's code for these things that you can actually go in and manipulate. But the basic user like myself, who's just trying to set it up on something like this, doesn't need to modify the code. Uh, everything's designed to work well by itself. So again, this is, this is gonna be the brains of the operation, uh, but it's not just the thing that's gonna make this all better. Um, We've got several other things that we're going to have to do in conjunction with this board to make this whole build work. Okay guys, so like I mentioned before, uh, some of the things that it's going to take to make that Speedwino board actually work and control this engine the way we want it to. One of those is a way to measure or sense actually the crank position. So uh, this engine from the factory being carbureted just uh, has basic um, magnets on the flywheel that uh, send a signal to the ignition coil. So you don't have uh, dynamic timing control on this thing. You can't really change the timing unless you, you know, cut out a key, get an offset key, for example, for the crankshaft um, and tweak the flywheel location. But long story short, you can't control timing. This right here is gonna be the key for us to control the timing on this thing, when the injectors fire, and all that good stuff. So what this is, is a, um, I forget what the tooth count is. I think it's a 30, 36 minus one reluctor wheel. So this is actually off a of Ford 4.6 liter V8. Uh, the 36 minus one means there would be 36 teeth, but it's missing one. And um, for those who may not know, the reason that it's missing a tooth is that this missing tooth is what the ECU does. Uh, it, it looks for this missing tooth and it says, hey, that's this position on a stroke, which normally that would be like the top dead center or whatnot. But anyway, it's basically a roadmap to tell the ECU where the engine is in its overall rotation. All right guys, so my phone actually stopped recording during that last video, but I believe I was finishing up uh, talking about the crankshaft reluctor wheel. So we went over the fact that this thing is a 36 minus one reluctor wheel. So 36 teeth, uh, one missing, which tells the ECU where the engine is in a rotation of the crankshaft so that it can control the timing of the spark, the timing of the uh, injector, and you know, the length of the pulse, etc. So uh, this is a key component to making the Speedwino ECU actually work the way we want it to. So in conjunction with the reluctor wheel, uh, we had to have a, a sensor to basically 
tell the ECU where the reluctor wheel is because the ECU can't just stare at the reluctor wheel and say, oh, hey, you're right there. So what we have here is a crank sensor off of some newer GM vehicle. Uh, what I like to do is go in and find like the cheap sensors off of you know the parts store website and I uh, will use uh, GM genuine parts not because I'm a GM guy or anything but because I know the factory sensors are usually made by somebody like Bosch and they're just known to be good quality so what we've got here is the crankshaft position sensor for uh, this what's going to be for this build so this is just a standard two wire sensor and it's got a little mounting point right here so we'll be able to build a bracket for the sensor wherever we decide to put the reluctor wheel on the engine and um, this sensor will feed back of course to the, the Speedwino and uh, help control this engine a little bit. So reluctor wheel, crankshaft position sensor kind of both go together on that side of things. So another sensor that we have here, also a GM part uh, made by Bosch, not sponsored again, just things I like to use. Um, although I say that I've never actually built anything like this before, but I just assume that they're of good quality. Let's put it that way. But anyway, so what this is, is a MAP sensor. So it measures the intake pressure all the way from zero, which is technically like, you know, negative one atmosphere. It measures zero absolute pressure all the way up to, I believe this is a two bar. It may even be a three bar. So we could actually go to you know, like 28 pounds of boost on this thing, but I can tell you this 16 horse uh, stock engine would never hold that. So the max we're probably gonna see is like, I'm shooting for maybe five or six or eight PSI, but um, who am I kidding? Once you actually start making boost and making noises, uh, you're always gonna wanna turn it up more to see what can happen. But anyway, this is a intake uh, air pressure or manifold air pressure sensor, MAP sensor. And it's actually got a thermistor in there as well, so we can measure the intake air temperature. And uh, both of those signals will feed back to that Speedwino ECU and again, help make this engine work on a true EFI type of setup. So those are the two main things with regard to sensors that we're gonna add to this engine. Um, I'm also considering an O2 sensor. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that we might do like an O2 feedback and basically that will just let us uh, help tune and get fuel trims right and everything um, and tell the ECU you know that it's doing a good job with uh, its control of the fuel and ignition source but yeah that basically covers all of the um, sort of main components that it's going to take to make the Speedwino be able to listen to what the engine's saying and tell it what to do better so hopefully with all this, we can make a little bit more power, get better control over the engine, maybe even make some boost noises. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a way to do like a two-step type rev limiter in this thing. So, you know, my vision for the future is to have like a little up pipe here with a, you know, a little flapper or something and make some, you know, shoot some fireballs and make some boost noises. So stick around if you want to see some of that stuff in future videos. I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, but in the next one, we're going to jump into tearing down this engine a little bit more and looking at what it's going to take to incorporate some of our EFI components on this uh, formerly non-EFI engine. So stick around for that. Um, check out the other videos on the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. You know, if you think this stuff's cool and want to see the future videos, but for now, That'll be it, and we'll see you in the next one.